form, tell us what you're passionate about, and we'll get in touch with you and let you know how you can be involved here at OAC. shifty outside, but today is nevertheless a great day to worship the Lord, am I right? Let's all stand as we sing our praises.
turn around and greet someone in church this morning. And also give them a hug. Even if they don't want to be hugged, give them a hug. Christ is like a single body, which has many parts. It is still one body, even though it's made up of different parts. In the same way, all of us, whether Jews or Gentiles, whether slaves or free, have been baptized into one body by the same spirit, and we have all been given the one spirit to drink. For the body itself is not made up of only one part, but of many parts.
in el cilio santificado se tu nombre venga a nosotros tu reino hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día perdona nuestras ofensas como también nosotros Perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en la tentación y líbranos del mal, porque tuyo es el reino, el poder y la gloria por siempre. Amén.
amazing. Good morning. Yes, get settled. So in case you missed the, the memo, our Sabbath service today is a celebration. For the last five weeks on Wednesdays, a group of us, about averaging about 60 people, have committed themselves to do life together, to be in community with each other. And this is the body of Christ, right? It's not just about um, seeing faces and greeting each other for an hour every weekend. We really want to live out what it means to be the body of Christ and to have that balance in our community of worshiping together, but also supporting each other in development. So we did a five-week uh, session where we had supper and soup, uh, soup supper together, and then we broke out into interest-based classes. And I want to let you know that we had 10 different groups meeting independently from Record Keeper, Great Controversy Study, to leadership development, to public speaking, puppeteering, skills in which we bonded with each other, encouraged each other, and developed with each other. And all of our instructors, all of those who provided the soup for our group, did so all on a volunteer basis. And so I just want to um, give a moment to sort of like recognize some of the people that you saw here. They made a commitment um, to lead and encourage a small group of people developing their knowledge and their skills. So today in our Sabbath service, we are going to, uh, well, we enjoyed the Spanish class who led us in prayer. We are going to see what the video storytelling group did as they captured interviews from our participants. And perfectly fitting with our theme, Better Together, we had two classes that combined forces. We had our hula praise team and a very new ukulele ensemble that combined forces to um, present to you a worship thing together. But before we do that, before we do that, we'd like to interrupt your regular programming. Yes, this is an interruption. <laughs> yes, this is an interruption. <laughs> You're supposed uh, to have a ukulele right now. Not yeah. right ukulele. now. Good morning, church. As you know, October is Pastor Appreciation Month. It's already November, so we didn't want to get... <laughs> So church, what is it? What is it? Pastor appreciation, right? Can we say that together? Pastor appreciation. Nice. Uh, we didn't want to let that go by without acknowledging and appreciating our pastor. Aww. So, so Pastor Steve. Who should be on his you? way to his graduation Steve, ceremony. Take so the stage, speed this Rhoda, up. Take the stage. And Pastor <laughs> yeah, Joey. you're funny. You're already here. Pastor so, Joey. Uh, he has why the, don't you guys he has take the and down here. waiting for him right now. Yeah, go ahead. Take a middle. Nice. Okay, so we're going to have a little bit, just a little bit of fun. We're going we're gonna to dress these um, pastors mm -hmm. up. And let's take a minute to consider just, um, just exactly how they support us. We'll start with Pastor Steve. We'll get all our helpers up here so you can see. Pastor Steve. Bowtie extraordinaire. Woo! Bowtie. Here comes the bowtie. Yeah, he has a large bowtie because he loves them. <laughs> Who what? hasn't noticed his amazing bowtie collection? <laughs> yeah. How many, how many like the bowtie? Bowtie, raise your hand. Okay, bowtie. Bowtie? Let's get him a rake, Two guys. Two people for bowtie. Are you serious? <laughs> okay. Let's get him a rake. A great break for gardening. Oh, yes. Because he has such a passion for community, for community engagement and community gardening, just look at our deeper roots garden outside. Uh, it's just a beautiful community connection for us and the seniors around the community. I'm not sure if you noticed, but I think there was like a group of about maybe 40 people that was just at the garden. Just, and they were all just walking, and they're saying all sorts of things about that so that that's great next item is a big bible yeah it's a big bible because he's such oh and there goes the big bow tie you can only have one big thing he's still he's such a big it. theologian <laughs> next item chef apron Let's see how many 
favorite because he's a five star vegan chef. <laughs> Sword and shield. <laughs> because of his passionate commitment to social justice, affordable housing, and all issues that affect the fair and compassionate treatment of all people. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, guess Pastor Steve is graduating today. Like now. <laughs> like now. He's got a jet like right after this. So. Let's give him his graduation oh. cap because it's his actual graduation from his master's in leadership at Trinity Western. Woo. Congratulations, oh, Pastor, Pastor Steve. Steve. That's awesome. Okay, let's move on to Pastor Rhoda. Pastor Rhoda. What do we have? Pastor Rhoda, Pastor Rhoda. Pilot jumpsuit. Jumpsuit, can you, can you get that, uh, put that baby on? Okay, yes, pilot jumpsuit because she flies and lands so many ministries. Yeah, always see, like a, a fighter pli yeah. pilot, tireless, <laughs> in tireless support of ministry. Pilot jumpsuit. Here we jumpsuit. go. Wow. <laughs> also a white lab coat. Wherever that would be. With a white lab coat. So for her knowledge of science and her undergraduate degree was in science. She was program director at Science World for many years. So. Many people have been inspired by her in-depth knowledge of creation science and nature. A shepherd stick? <laughs> <laughs> a shepherd stick because she is such a nurturer and cares for kids and families here at OAC, overseeing our children's ministry and youth programs. This is actually looking pretty nice, Pastor yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah. Nice. Next time What's next, Adrian? And a tool belt. Tool belt, because she's so con in con incredibly proficient in making things work that are broken around OAC. She can fix almost anything. A plunger, a plunge, <laughs> even a plunge, a toilet. This script is not good. <laughs> Essentially, that's a, that's so she can awesome. fix a block toilet. Yeah. <laughs> and next item, plastic. Or an applause. A plastic applause hand because she is such an amazing cheerleader. That's for perfect so many plastic people. applause. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Joey, I think you gotta put down the guitar for Yeah, us. Joey, you better put down the guitar, <laughs> man. We got lots for you, bud. Superstar, rock and roll dude. I'm gonna have to go over this Shiny jacket with gold <laughs> necklace. Because <laughs> <laughs> his music talent is so amazing and professional, he could have been a recording superstar. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Okay, he wear this a coach uh, clipboard. And a basketball. Nice. Basketball. So, because he's such a coach and leader for his worship teams coming to OAC uh, 15 <laughs> years ago and beginning a worship ministry <laughs> that he has coached and nurtured into more than 50 volunteers at five worship teams. Roll a Cat 5 cable. For support and direction to all our church technology, including our SARM system, our live streaming, lights, and media. First aid kit. Because Joey is cons constantly providing aid to his team with spiritual and emotional support and friendship. And red, red boom stick. Because <laughs> he teaches yeah. and mentors so many kids and teens in their musical skills, both at OAC and at Deer Lake School. So. Okay, I'm going to add to this a little bit. Yeah. So here it is. Now this goes for the three of you, actually. Okay, but so you can just put the stick down for a minute. <laughs> um, this 
give a hand for all our three pastors. Hang on, hang on, hang on. So there's that, 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 it's not visual. I mean, just give me a visual on this for a minute. Let's just say that was chopped off about maybe two and a half feet. And that is a yoga outfit for, for the three of these people, pastors. And that is an example of their flexibility when it comes to real life issues. Okay? <laughs> Let's give a hand for our three pastors here. We're so fortunate to have and blessed to have such a diverse team. We want to invite their families up here as well to join them. And um, any ministry leaders, elders, or board members who would like to come around them and pray with them at this time, that would be great. In fact, you know what? I'm going to ask you guys to come to the front a little bit so we can come around you. I can take this. Are you hot? Are you hot? <laughs> I'm just going to take that. Keep those shorts on. <laughs> Elder Galen, can you lead us in prayer? We just wanted you to know how much we appreciate you all. And so elders, leaders, um, our ministry leaders, come on up and surround us here. We're going to pray for our pastors. We're sorry to interrupt that program of today, but we're not at the same time because we love you so much. And we, when we just look at you dressed like this, we're blown away by the various things that you do. We make, make it light and we make it fun, but in reality, our church is so blessed to have you three. And your families, thank you so much for being with us today. You are such an integral part of OAC our history, our past, and our future. We love you so much, and so we just want to pray for you at this time. Father, we surround our pastors this morning, their families. We embrace them. We hold them up. We cheer them on. Father, what a gift they are to this community. Thank you so much for calling each one of them in their personal journeys to, to come into ministry. They have made so many sacrifices along their life path in order to minister here. But at the same time, you have blessed them. You have lifted them up. You have placed eagle's wings under them. And uh, it is such an honor for OAC to have these three as our pastor leaders. Thank you, Father, um, for their families, for the complexities of ministry when you also have kids and partners and commitments in so many places. We pray a very special blessing upon each of their units, Father, that you would just lift them up and keep them safe in every way. Father, this morning, this church just lifts them up to you. We praise you for what they have been for us and what they will continue to do with us and through your grace, Father. Thank you for this community of grace. May they know today in a very special and fun and silly but yet so heartfelt way that we value them deeply and we will stand by them. We surround them right now, physically but spiritually, mentally, socially, Father. We surround them with your church family, with your love. We give them to you and this church family in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. No you to your regular scheduled programming. I was wearing when I started announcing. So 
Um, we're going to continue with our worship celebration. At first, we're going to see um, the hula praise and the ukulele uh, ensemble combined. So as they're taking their places, um, afterwards you will see what the video storytelling team did as they present. And following the video, I'll be inviting the boys and girls to come and take a front row seat for a special feature just for you. So I turn it over to our ukulele jam uh, that was led by Owen and Adrian and our hula praise team led by Esther.
together. That's when we, we come together at OAC. It's an event put on by the Oak Ridge Adventist Church um, that allows families, all members of the family, to come out middle of the week, do something fun together recreationally, but yet still be able to choose something that appeals to them specifically. Eat good food in the beginning and... Get a bite. Vegan dinner. Eat a lot of good food. Don't, don't worry about cooking. You, don't, you just need to come and worry about having fun filling your stomach and filling your spirit. You separate into different classes to learn different things, whether it's music or... Like public speaking or media or... How to play ukulele, how to hula and all that stuff. Vespers and prayer groups and also leadership classes, so that's pretty cool. Um, I've learned how to use a puppet. The favorite part is we get to share, we get to critique people, have them learn. And it's a safe place because you're there to learn and help everyone. You should come to Wednesdays together for the experience. And why not come when you can learn something new? Wednesdays together, life changing. There's so much that I could show you, but I don't want to waste your time because you just had to be here. It's fun, it's for everybody. There's nothing to lose and everything to gain, including lots of fun friendship. get a taste for what Wednesdays Together was about, I expect that you're going to feel a little sense that you missed out on something. So don't fear, don't be upset. Uh, we will bring back Wednesdays Together early in 2017. So hold on to that feeling because when we launch it again, we want you to come and invite your friends. And our puppeteering class now has a special feature and I'm going to invite all the boys and girls, if you want to come and get a really good look, you're welcome to come right now and um, just plop yourselves on the carpet right over here on this side of the stage. Take a seat on the pew. Yes, Imogen, you lead the way. That's right, grab a spot on the bench or on the carpet. Uh, we have a special story for you by our puppeteering class. Hi, Harold. Are you ready to make jack-o'-lanterns? But, Brian, how will we get pumpkins? Do we have any money? Who needs money? The fields are loaded with free pumpkins. Did a farmer give us some pumpkins? Well, no. But Mr. Brown wouldn't miss any of them. Oh, yeah? He's got really sharp eyes, like an eagle. Then we'll have to camouflage ourselves. What's camouflage? You know, a disguise, so he won't see us? Oh, you mean camouflage? That's what I said. Camouflage. I'll show you. Camouflage, oh brother. Hi, where's Brian? Hi, Celia. Brian's planning a great pumpkin heist. He's coming now. <laughs> Brian? I don't believe this. Why did you paint your face? How's this for camouflage? A camel what? A disguise. You look like a giant pumpkin. Well, that's the idea. So when I borrow the pumpkins from the field, the farmer won't know it's me. But God will know you. <laughs> right, I'll fix that. God can still see you all through those leaves. Celia's right, Brian. God watches us all the time. Really? Oh, no. 
God told us to never steal things. And never to think ugly thoughts. That's a sin too. Let's go, Harold. I'll look more, I'll make more disguises and you can cut ugly faces on the jack-o'-lanterns. But how will we get pumpkins? Oh, no sweat. My dad already bought some. Hey, wait, how will I take this paint off? Oh, that's your problem. Turpentine might help. You could try use paint thinner. But won't that burn my face? Sure. Now you know what the pastor means when he talks about the high cost of sin. <laughs> well, you could just let the paint wear off. Wear off? Ugh. How long will that take? Oh, till Black Friday, wouldn't you say, Harold? Well, at least by Christmas. Oh, no. How many days till Christmas? Thank you. You can head back to your seats. Thank you for joining our puppet show this morning. Any of you want to hear good news? Anyone who wants to hear the good news? Yes or no? Yes. yes. No, I'm not getting married. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, we have some bad news to go through, so bear with me. So uh, two weeks ago, when Pastor David Asherick was in town, I was uh, packing up to go to the evening meeting Saturday night. I was at my mom's place in New Westminster, and uh, I was running late, so I rushed packing things and flew through Highway 91 through... Uh, Southeast, Southwest Marine Drive and got to UBC and just in time for the uh, presentation. That presentation, by the way, was fantastic because it was talking about uh, the goodness of God. So uh, that went well. And then when I got home, I noticed my bag was missing. It's not in the trunk. So what to do? Looked everywhere. It's not in the car. So I just comforted myself. Well, I may have left it at my mom's place, which I've done in the past. So Sunday night, after the uh, final presentation of David Asherick, I went to my mom's place and uh, looked, and the bag wasn't there. Looked everywhere, looked in the garbage bin. I just couldn't find it. So I said, well, we'll leave it up to God to help that person return the bag because it had all kinds of information, personal information. People would know where I live, my phone number, my mom's number. Everything was there. So I went through the whole week with this guilt of irresponsibility, why in the world did I not take time to look and check things before leaving? I was in a rush. I was so uh, focused on getting to a meeting on time. You know that feeling. So Monday came, no glasses. The bag, was, the bag had the glasses for uh, computer work. Then Wednesday night was the last class for our public speaking here at the OAC. So we rehearsed my presentation and it went, it was a disaster as I had all these things in my mind and uh, the whole week went by, no bag. So I prayed about it and asked the Lord, well, wouldn't it be nice if the bag showed up just in time for me to tell a story of how good you are? And you know what? Saturday came, I got to my mom's place and there the bag, there was the bag. I found it, I found it, sitting in front of my mom's door. So God has a sense of humor. He not only impressed the person who returned the bag, but also answered my prayer of uh, giving me a story of what to present here today. So this reminds us of the uh, story of Jesus in Luke 15 about the lady who lost her coin and the lost sheep. You know how the story goes. They looked all over the place. I looked all over the place. I couldn't find it. But she found the coin. So what's the big deal about this? It's a coin. It could be replaced. The bag can just be replaced. And um, why, tell, why bother telling the story? 
Well, there are little, these are little items, but there are bigger items. You've lost your spouse, you lost your daughter, son, even a friend, because of all the bad things happening in this world. But God's in the business of finding things because he works in the lost and found department. All you have to do is call for help and pray and wait patiently. So I leave you with that, and hopefully when you lose things, always think of God. Um, our next group is, from, is sort of with, had been practicing with us on Wednesdays together. They are a Mandarin strings group called Little Strings Attached. And our church has been partnering and developing a partnership with Pastor Peter and his team at Spiritual Depot. So Little Strings Attached, I'm going to invite you to take the stage. And they're going to present to you a couple of songs they've been practicing. And it's also a teaser because they'll be putting on a concert in December right here, December t uh, 10th, I believe, in the evening. So if you enjoy their music today, um, please plan to return and support them again in December.
strings attached. Thank you very much for gracing us with such e expertise and skill on the strings. Uh, we had more than one student in public speaking class, and so for our second short vignette of a talk, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Aslan. I just want to give a big thank you to all the organizers for Wednesdays Together. It was such a great opportunity to just be social during the week because I don't know about you guys, but I have like a full-time job and I have two courses in school and um, it's, it's really nice to be able to um, do good things with good people during the week and um, get closer to God and get closer to each other at the same time. And uh, we're a family, right? So we shouldn't just see each other on the weekends, right? Um, <laughs> I, I, if you didn't come this year, you should definitely consider coming next year. Um, thank you to the organizers, and thank you for the great food. So raise your hands um, if, you were, if you were there for the Peru um, Pathfinder Sabbath where we talked about the um, stories and personal experiences. Okay, good. So um, most of you have heard the stories, and if not, you're going to hear another one today. Um, you've heard the stories of all the testimonies and personal experiences and ways that the trip changed us. So I'm going to give you a personal, a little personal taste of what the trip was like for me, um, a personal view of how I survived Peru. And I guess I'm standing here right in front of you now, so I'm living proof. Uh, so praise the Lord. Uh, so a few months ago, I, I found myself in an ER room bed and feeling very uncomfortable in my legs because I was getting injected with a needle for uh, about 10 times around a wound in my leg for rabies. Now, you're like, whoa, hold up, Aslan. Like, did you have rabies? Are you OK? I'm fine. We know that now. But um, I, was, I was feeling a little, te a little tense and anxious at the time. Um, so you may wonder how I got there. Well, I'm getting there. Uh, so they, they injected my leg with the needle, and they were squishing it and mixing. It's like they were mixing the inside of my legs into like a pudding or something. And so my legs felt like jelly afterwards. Um, it's like it was leg day or something. Um, and uh, um, my, I was like shaking and cold. And, but luckily, I had the warmth of my father's hand resting on my shoulder, keeping me on the bed from like shaking off the bed. Um, and I just had to keep taking deep breaths and staring at the ceiling because there wasn't much to do when you're confined to a bed. Um, so how did I get there? That's what I was thinking to myself. How did I get there? What led to this? I was trying to, so I, so I began to retrace my steps, retrace my steps in my memory. So I'm going to ask you to journey with me to a Peruvian rural village in Yaokat. So it was just another morning. And we were another morning of getting ready to build stoves in Peru. And uh, we were walking up this big hill. And this was one of our most difficult days yet because, because we were going to be building a stove in a dark corner in like this smoky, ashy room with like rubble on the ground. You could easily like trip on anything and hurt yourself really badly. So um, we didn't have any tarp for mixing cement either. So we basically just had to scrape all we could off of the ground. And uh, so, so yeah, I was eager to get started. I was ready. I was pumped. And then, I, so I was ahead of the group walking up to the gate of the house. And then I was greeted by these two dogs. And um, so you can picture me walking up a ramp to the gate. And I'm walking, and I kick this small pebble. And it lands next to the wrong dog. Um, and we lock eyes. It, it was like hate at first sight. 
and um, and he, he he started barking really loudly, and he started riling up his other his other companion too, his other dog, the other dog, and that other dog looked really sick, like just he didn't look happy, and he was like drooling foam out the side of his mouth, and his eyes were yellow. It was like something out of a Twilight movie or something. Anyways, um, so. Um, he charges, he, they, charge, they charge at me up the ramp, and they're chasing me, and I'm running up the ramp, and the villagers are laughing at me, because they're like, ha, that foreigner, he, he doesn't know what he's doing. And it's true, I didn't, and it sounds as ridiculous as it was. And um, the village people were laughing at me, and at the top, I, at the, I got to the top of the ramp, and it felt like I'd climbed a mountain. I was like, okay, because the altitude is different there, too. It's much higher, and so... I was just tired of running. I had to stop. I was like, I'm done. It's a hot day, and I'm in skinny jeans. And my instincts, my God-given instincts, told me to put my legs up and my arms in front of my face. And so that's what I did. Because um, they were jumping. They were jumping right on top of me. And so, so that revealed my nice, juicy hamstring right here, which looked like fresh, fresh meat to them, you know? So... Um, after, so, so, you, you can guess what happened. Uh, after the excitement of that day, uh, things went on as usual. The leaders, however, kept cautioning me to, hey, maybe you should get that checked out. Just maybe, you know, just maybe. Um, but it didn't break skin, so I thought, hey, it's okay. Um, but then, the day before we left, in the, we were in the Cusco village. No, we were in the Cus we were in a hotel in Cusco. And, and so um, I found a scab on the same spot where it bit me. So I made the connection, and, and, but it was too late. We were heading back. And then two weeks later in Van, we were back in Van. I was back in Vancouver. And I was walking in a park down a trail with my parents. And I saw a dog walking by me on the left, and I got triggered. And I had a flashback. And I... I uh, I was like, oh, okay, uh, mom, dad, I have something to tell you. And so, um, needless to say, they were worried because they're great parents. And they brought me um, to ER that night as soon as they could just to make sure, you know, because the uh, thing about rabies is it doesn't show signs sometimes until up to two years later. And then at that point, you don't know what, what caused it, right? Because... You, f you forgot, like, from two years later, and then by that time, it's late. It's too late, and it's deadly. So, um, but now we know the dog was healthy, and I'm healthy. I'm fine. Don't worry. So why did I tell you all this? Because I learned a lot of lessons from this small experience that started off with just me kicking a rock impulsively, and then... Um, I learned, I learned so much from this experience. I learned to face my fears because I came, I went back to the dog later that day and I gave it a pet on the back and I said, I forgive you. <laughs> and um, that, that time I got the, the shot, they found out I'd actually never had a tetanus in my life, so I was a little long overdue. Um, so God can make good come from bad, right? And... The, and another thing I learned is that the leaders really care. You know, if they're telling you something, that they're, they're planting an idea, like a seed in your head, maybe you should let it grow, water it a bit. Um, and next time I get attacked by a dog and a dog is looking for trouble, I'm not just going to get attacked. I'm going to kick that sucker in the jaw. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye. Uh, that was an unexpected punchline, <laughs> for sure. Wow, one thing that um, just struck me watching all the participants today is just how beautiful our community is, how diverse it is, and it's biblical. That's what I wanted to remind you of this morning. Our scripture reading during worship came from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 
verses 12 to 14. And I invite you to leave today and really spend some time reviewing that text, reading that scripture, and digesting what it means to be the body of Christ. You'll find a few themes. You will see that one of the underlying themes is unity in diversity. We are all told that we are a part of the body. Turn to someone beside you and share, if you were literally in that metaphor, what body part would you be? Go ahead, turn to someone and share, just what are you? The elbow, the wrist, the hand, the heart. I hear some smiles. I hear some muscles. Yeah, we know we have some muscles in this church. Heart, lips, our worship and praise team, definitely we've got lips. Okay, here's the next question to play on um, pastor appreciation. What body part do you think the pastors of this church what body part are the pastors? Who? Oh, the skin? The heart? Very nice. I, I, I appreciate that answer. The tongue? Yeah, the, those of us who are preaching and sharing God's word, that's definitely an, uh, a favorite part of some of us to be the tongue. Not always. Feet? Why would you say feet? You, uh, yeah, that, that's my goal. Walk the walk and talk the talk. Yes, absolutely. Eyes? Vision. Yes, we absolutely need vision. But all of those pieces, a pastor can't be all of those body parts alone. You talk about vision, we have an amazing, incredible board here that supports the pastoral team. When, it, when you talk about vision and, and, and the st strategizing, I'm glad you didn't say the brains, uh, because we might be smart, but we're not smart enough to really fully shepherd this community and this facility. So we have a, a fantastic board who helps us with that. And you said heart. And that made me think of our elder team here. And we have a team of elders who really do live out that heart for spiritual care because we have over 300, close to 400 people who consider this to be their home congregation. And as you can appreciate, if, if you've ever needed to place uh, a call for just spiritual support or, or prayer, there's a whole number of you. And so I am thankful for the elder team you saw pray for us this morning because they feel a lot of the heart of this church and they role model the heart of this church and i would say that all of you are called at one time or another to be the heart of this church and definitely feet but all of you have that time where you will need to be the feet and the body of this church i i liked skin skin was kind of interesting because it encompasses uh, all the all the parts so i really appreciate that metaphor but for me, what I'm struck with is the thing that I need to do the most, the body part that I actually must fulfill before anything else is I need to be the knees. I need to kneel in prayer for you every single day. I need to kneel in prayer for myself every single day. And sometimes I can't kneel, but it represents that connection that I have to have in order to be a sufficient support because I have learned that I am so insufficient. That was my biggest learning lesson. Um, I put it out there when I submitted my cover letter and resume, but it's so true. Nothing taught me about my insufficiency as much as filling this role in the past few months. And I praise God because he gave us the promise that his grace is sufficient for us. And I claim that promise. I read that text what's called um, internalizing that text. And I hear him say, Rhoda, my grace is sufficient for you and my strength is made perfect in your weakness. So please depart today knowing that as we celebrate and express the diversity and the unity that we have in the body, really contemplate your role. What piece of the body do you play? And know that as pastors, we cannot fulfill all those parts ourselves. 
First and foremost, I want to play the part of the knees, kneeling in prayer and, and bringing you and your spiritual walk before the Lord, interceding, petitioning, and knowing not so much that God will move because he is moving and he is present with you, but more so that my prayer is that you would come to see it, that your eyes would be open, that your ears would be open, that your heart would be open, and you would really come to, to know and digest and be convicted that God is present with you and he's calling you into community, into this body to know which part you are to play out. So I encourage you to study that passage of scriptures in 1 Corinthians 12 and to also, as a church, for us to continue to study the biblical example of the new church found in Acts chapter 2. As I read this passage, there's two themes that come to mind. Acts 2, verse 42 to 47 says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many miracles were done by the apostles. All of the believers were together and had everything in common, selling possessions and goods they gave to anyone in need. Everyone, every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. One day a week did they meet together? How many days a week? Seven days a week. Every day the scripture tells us that they came together. I appreciate today is a little different. Our community in our city is a lot larger. But I think this is encouragement that it should be more than once a week or once a month, speaking prophetically to some of you. They broke bread in their homes. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were saved. This passage speaks about the body of Christ in balance. There was a balance between worship and community life, doing life together and eating together. It's biblical. The passage continues, Acts 4, verse 32 and 35. All believers were of one heart and mind. No one claimed their possessions as their own, but shared generously all they had. And with great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of Jesus, and much grace was upon them all. And here, the second uh, tone of this community, if the first was balance, in this passage we see benevolence. And that is what I experienced in those five Wednesday nights together, the benevolence of our community to not just show up, but to bring food, to clean up, to teach and invest themselves, to not hoard their skills and their expertise to themselves so that they could say, well, I'm the best Spanish speaker in the church or I'm the best public speaker in the church. There was this spirit of benevolence wanting to see others have the skills that they had. And so I thank you for participating and I encourage you to anticipate the next Wednesday together. And in between, consider what part of the body do I play? And be part of the body, not just um, an occasional face, but I really encourage you to live out your life in this community biblically with balance and benevolence. Thank you for joining us today. We're going to wrap our worship service. I'm going to call our praise team back out, and I'm going to call our deacons forward. We're going to conclude this worship celebration in both singing and in returning our tithes and offerings. Both are a way in which we say, my skills, my talents, my heart, it's too much to keep it just to myself. I give God back the praise, I give him the glory, I give him the honor, I give him the, the joy that's in my heart, but I also understand that all of my gifts, whether they be talents, monetary, blessings, physical blessings, we just take this time to worship and give back to God as he leads. So thank you, team, for closing us out in worship, in song, and in giving. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this community. What a privilege it is to serve them. 
every name. Some, some of the times they escape my lips, but they never escape your mind. You know them each by name. You know the number of hairs on their head. And you created this incredible diversity. You created each body part, whether it's a fingernail or an elbow or an ear or a mustache. You created us all to be part of this beautiful, diverse body. And so I pray for your Holy Spirit to unite us in that diversity, for your Holy Spirit to unite us in benevolence, for your Holy Spirit to unite us in balance. May we really feel and experience the community you designed us for more than just one hour a weekend. Stir in us a new conviction to invest and be part of this community today. I lay all these people and all they represent into your hands, knowing that your watch, care, and love for them is so much greater than I am. Forgive me for my inadequacy and my imperfections in serving this community and help me to grow in, in doing them a better service and doing your love and your name better justice. I pray humbly in your holy name, amen. Let's all rise as we sing our closing song. Glory, we are 
My name is Janessa Little, and I work with Let's Move Vancouver. Um, oh, yes, you can sit. <laughs> Thanks, good miming. <laughs> um, I work with Let's Move Vancouver, and I'm a proud congregant of this, uh, this community. It's so good to be back with you whenever I'm here. I just feel so excited that I'm a part of a community that's quirky and diverse and d dynamic and a place that I feel safe and I feel like other people feel safe. Um, so I just want to take a moment to kind of express that. Um, I am going to just invite you, if you are new, if you are, this is your first time in our community, we really want to celebrate you and get to know you a little bit better. So if you want to come up to my left, your right, at the end of the service, we are going to do something called seven minutes or less. That just allows us to get to know you a little better and to give you some OAC swag. Um, so please come up to this end. And is it Karen? So you can hang out with Karen for a little bit. We promise to not take more than seven minutes of your time. And if you are in need of prayer, we do not want you to leave this place feeling like you haven't gotten that moment. So if you come up to my right, your left, Gaylene is here and she wants to pray with you. Don't leave this place without that. Um, I just want to um, highlight a couple things that are going on in our community. Um, as you saw, today was all about some of the things that we've been doing in the past. We have tons of things that are coming up. And one of them is Hacksaw Ridge. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of this movie. It's coming out. Um, in fact, I think it might be out today. Um, but it's telling this incredible story of Desmond Doss. Um, a man who went into battle without a gun and saved so many lives. It's inspiring and it's very timely. So if you um, are around on November 11th, that's next week, Friday, at 10 a.m. at the Landmark Cinema in New West, we are doing um, a, an open $5 per person showing of Hacksaw Ridge. So we really want to encourage you to come and spend um, your Remembrance Day morning looking back at what gave us our freedom today. I also want to remind you of a, an upcoming sermon series. Um, we are going to be starting to study Colossians, be all and end all. Um, our November sermon series launches next week. It's a three-part look at the New Testament book of Colossians. The author Paul points over and over again to the whole world word connecting to Jesus. Whether we see it or not, come and explore the divine spark of life that changes everything, big and small. And finally, we'd like to thank you for joining us today, and I want to invite Pastor Rhoda to come back and do our blessing and benediction. Thanks. And if you have that Honda Odyssey, with the AB305N license plate, uh, somebody needs to escape and you're impeding their de quick departure. So not to delay our own departure, let's bow. Oh, Amir, this day is full of surprises. Um, just a quick note about um, any members of the youth band, we will be having our rehearsal in the chapel right after church, thank you. Great, is that also a, a casting call? You're accepting more youth? Okay, so if you would like to know what our youth band is all about, please join Amir in the chapel, which is the small room right opposite the sanctuary before you head out. Even if you can't stay, touch base with him. All right, let's bow our heads one more time in prayer. God, I thank you so much for um, the gift of today, a celebration day, a Sabbath day. And I pray that we leave here changed, um, renewed, than when we first arrived. 
Continue to fill us with your spirit. May it not just dwell in under this roof, but may your spirit continue to dwell in our hearts. And may our community outside these walls continue to be blessed because we were blessed. I pray this in your high and holy name. Amen. Amen. See you next week. Thank you. Actually, from Armstrong, you're a fossil. I grew up in Vernon.